بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي ونسلم على رسوله الكريم أما بعد Can I just confirm uh, Am I audible? Can you hear me okay? Alhamdulillah That's fine Inshallah This is, these are the ayat that we were looking at last week. وَمِنَ الْأَعْوَذُ بِاللَّهِ بِالشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يُعْجِبُكَ قَوْلُهُ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَيُشْهِدُ اللَّهَ عَلَى مَا فِي قَلْبِهِ وَهُوَ أَلَدُّ الْخِصَامِ Amongst people, there are those whose words and whose speech pleases you and gives you comfort in this worldly life. And he... And he, wit he, and he makes Allah witness over that which is in his heart. So <clears throat> he has a very sweet tongue. So when he comes, he speaks to you in a manner that is very pleasing to you. And that he, he tries to, to, to make you satisfied through that sweet tongue that he has. Whereas deep inside, he's concealing disbelief and kufr inside his heart. Despite that, he falsely claims that he is a believer and he says that Allah is a witness of his Iman. So he calls Allah to witness over that which is in his heart. And he does that, even though he is the most quarrelsome individual. So the one who, he is the fearest of opponents in terms of, in terms of opposing you, in terms of quarrelling with the people. He is, he is probably, in fact, Aladdul Khisam, he's the worst. So he, despite that, he, he has such claims. When he turns his back, turns away from you, moves away, he strives to spend corruption on earth. And he destroys the crops and the progeny. So this individual has put, had, had put um, a farm, a uh, a land full of, mashallah, um, it was wheat or whatever the pro produce was there, whatever the crops was there. He put it to fire. He, he, so this was a crime that he was guilty of. And Allah Ta'ala does not like fasad. <coughs> when he said to him, when he's told, when he's asked to fear Allah, the arrogance and the pride takes him to continue with the sin. Hasbuhu Jahannam, Jahannam and the hell is enough for him. What an evil abode Jahannam is. This individual, Akhnas Akhnas ibn Shuray, we talked about him last week. <clears throat> and another point that is probably here worthy of mention, mention, appropriate, is that why was this individual particularly condemned in this ayah as part of the Quran al Kareem? We don't find much about him in the in the, in the books of Sirah that he particularly opposed Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He was just like many others. However, this appears to be a, a crime that, this, that that earned him this particular curse and this particular lana that until the day of judgment, people will continue to read as part of their the recitation. That فَحَسْبُهُ جَهَنَّمْ وَلَوِئِسَ الْمِهَادِ That he is destined towards hellfire and he is a Jahannami individual. And he is a sinful person and he is a corrupt person. فَسْنُوْسِدَ فِيهَا And he is a person who tries to deceive. So all these features of his will continue to be recited until, until the last day because he had falsely called Allah Azza wa to witness over that that, with that that which was in his heart. So it is very important that as believers we understand that we do not, we, we should show respect and adab to Allah Azza wa Jal. And we must not make such claims where we, we think that we'll get away despite taking an oath in Allah. So when, when you take an oath in Allah Azza wa Jal, make sure that you avoid always stay away from making a false oath. Someone takes a qasam that I had done something and he hadn't, or he says I hadn't done something and it had. We've seen many times in our lives as well, and you must have seen such individuals, um, that people who make 
take a full soul. Allah Azza wa disgraces them at later stage in life somewhere. And this is their fate. And this definitely happens to them before they breathe last. Um, in this individual had taken a false soul, so Allah Azza wa humiliated him. He, dis he destroyed him uh, in, 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 in the sense that the, in, in his reputation, his iman, or um, his, his, his uh, yani, any, any good mention, he will not get it because he had taken a false soul. So false oath is a major sin. Similarly, one claims to have had, uh, to have had a dream which he hadn't. Oh, last night I met Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam and I met Sayyidina Ayyub alayhi salam and I met that uh, Salahuddin or I met Shaykh Abdul Qadir or for Rex or Y or Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah and even though he hadn't, in order to, to get some, some respect and in order to get some recognition in order to whatever, uh, false claims. So in an individual who claims to, to have had a dream which he hadn't, then this is the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said in them in Afral al this is amongst the worst type of lies and most worst type of fabrication that an individual claims to, to, to have seen a dream which it hadn't. So this is what is that about this Akhnas ibn Shurayl. He comes to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and he tries to please him with his tongue even though he knows that he's a liar yet he calls Allah Azza wa to witness over that, that lie and he got that witness and he was humiliated. May Allah Ta'ala protect us all from the wrath of Allah. It is important that we again remind ourselves that Allah Azza wa Jal is a reality. Allah Azza wa Jal does not sit on the fence. Allah Azza wa Jal does not ignore people. So when you speak to Allah Azza wa Jal, you, you, you speak in a manner which shows responsibility in your salah. Try and have attention in your dua. Try and have attention. The Prophet said that Allah Azza wa Jal does not accept a dua an qalbin lahin, a heart which is not attentive, a heart which is not turned towards Allah, and it's just a mere lip service. Um, that is a dua which Allah Azza wa Jal shows, shows no interest in. So try to, to take Allah Azza wa Jal seriously and try and bring Allah Azza wa Jal in every sphere of life, in, in every aspect of life. You will reap the barakat and the reward of it. So, and people who, who try to who think that they, they, they will get away by making a false oath, they, 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 they are in a delusion. Nobody has ever got away with a false oath and nobody in the future ever will. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu dukhlu fissil mikafa O you, wa min al-nas, sorry, wa min al-nas ma yashri, we had also talked about this ayah, wa min al-nas ma yashri nafsa hubtigha amardatillah. Amongst people are those who have purchased, who sold themselves, ibtigha amardatillah, seeking the rida of Allah Azza wa Jal, the pleasure of Allah Azza wa Jal. Wallahu ra'ufun bil ibad, and Allah Azza wa Jal is kind and compassionate to, 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 to the slaves. So Allah Ta'ala mentions in the Quran Kareem, what would Allah Azza wa Jal get from you by, through punishing you if you remain loyal and if you remain grateful? So the, in terms of practical aspects in life, may, none of us can claim to be perfect. We all have our deficiencies. We all have our flaws. We all have our weaknesses. But with those weaknesses, if you continue to, to turn to Allah Azza wa Jal with optimism, with hope, and ask Allah Azza wa Jal to cover your faults, Allahumma astur awratina wa amin nawatina. Wa Allah conceal our faults. And Allah Azza wa Jal secure, grant us peace and security from things that, that, we are, that we are afraid about. So an individual who continues to make such dua, the Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal covers him. And Allah Azza wa Jal conceals him. And his faults are, Allah Azza wa Jal forgives his faults. There is a famous couplet in Urdu. Some of you, I know, understand Urdu quite well. Uh, someone said, and mashallah, a wonderful couplet. That, uh, oh beggar, you come to, to collect some, some flowers from, the, from this garden and you only picked a few and you're left thinking that your, your, the, 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 the bowl that you're carrying or the dama that, 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 that the, 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 the sleeve or, um, or, part, or whatever, the piece of cloth that, that you're carrying with you, uh, it, you think that it doesn't have any space, any more space for more flowers. Um, and you, you became content with whatever little you picked. You, you, why didn't you try to get a bigger piece of cloth? Why did you try not to remedy that, that, that deficiency that you have? You should have tried to remedy that. And then you would have been able to pick more flowers and you would have been able to, got, to get more. So as beggars, as students, as, as, as believers, Allah Azza wa has created us with our deficiencies. 
but there is a remedy for every deficiency that we have. And that remedy is dua, and that remedy is hope, and that remedy is humbleness before Allah. And and and, and that remedy is is the khashiyat of Allah Azza wa Jal. If you can get this, then in then all your deficiencies will be taken care of, and Allah Azza wa Jal will grant you plenty. There are those who sold themselves seeking the pleasure of Allah anhu. At the time of Hijrah, he gave away everything in order to save his Iman. He gave away everything to save his Iman. So as a as a what, what we what we learn from this ayah of the Quran Kareem, that if you're ever put to a test in life where you are made to choose between your Iman and between everything else that you have then give away everything for the sake of Allah. Because in this temporary life, that will be a difficult test. But after, as, as soon as the eyes close, as soon as you turn to your creator, in, uh, firstly, even in this in this dunya, Allah Azza wa will replace everything that has, that was taken away from, from you. Sayyidina Ayub salam had lost everything, but then Allah Azza wa gave him that and a lot more. <clears throat> Sahaba radiallahu anhu, at the time of Hijrah, they came to, to Medina and they had nothing. In fact, you'll shortly be reading an ayah where the Almighty Allah, where, 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 where the where the Ashab Sufa are talked about. So, and they had nothing; they had given away everything for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. But then came a time when Subhanallah, Allah Azza wa Jal gave him so much and granted him so granted them so much that gold and silver had no value in their, in their eyes. So, may Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, they were Mashallah, they, they, they were rich and they, they had plenty. Because they had so 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 when they gave away everything to Allah Azza wa Jal, that is a seed planted, and with as much sincerity, depending on your sincerity, it'll grow with as much strength as you had made that sacrifice uh, with. May Allah Taala grant us sincerity and may He give us tawfiq to make Allah Azza wa Jal our goal and objective and our target in life, and may Allah Azza wa Jal give us tawfiq not to to be to be uh, entangled and not to be held back by whatever we have. So all that we have, it gives us strength to do more for the sake of Allah Azza wa I know one of the sisters here, mashallah, she has some friends and they try and make a lot of effort in the path of Allah Azza wa Jal. And she, she and, and I think she's present in, in the group. And there are others as well, I'm sure many more, who who have whatever they have, it's, they have of Allah And they're always there to, to support any any. Any, any needy individual and needy people and needy Muslims, may Allah Azza wa grant them abundant rewards. So they are, that, that's the type of life that we, we all should be, should be leading. Wallahu ra'ufun bil ibad. Remember, Allah Azza wa does not want to put you in trouble. So when you are in trouble, Allah rescues you. So look at Allah Azza wa as someone who's going to rescue you, not as someone who's going to put you in trouble. Allah does not like to see people in trouble. When he puts you in trouble, it's for your benefit. Otherwise, we land ourselves in difficulties and hardships, and then Allah Azza wa rescues us. Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu dhkulu. O you who, who believed, enter into silm, into peace or into Islam, kafatan, completely. And do not follow the footsteps of shaitan. Surely he is a clear enemy to you. I don't remember if we had been able to discuss this in detail. Nothing, but we did briefly touch upon this, that some uh, leading, some, 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 some Jewish scholars, when they came into Islam, like Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Salam radiallahu anhu and a number of other uh, other uh, prominent individuals and they are praised elsewhere in the quran Kareem. The Prophet sallallahu used to praise them that these are people who would get double the reward. For them, the, the ajr and thawab is double. So they, they were very prominent people. However, there, was a, there, there came a point in their life when they thought that they could probably mix two religions. They could mix Islam with Judaism or maybe with whatever others others might have had similar views but the the, the, the background of this ayah shan nuzul or asbab nuzul is that sayyidina abdullah ibn salam and people of his type they thought that they could mix two religions some things are compulsory in islam but they are not forbidden in judaism and some bit some things are compulsory in judaism but not forbidden in islam so what they thought because they had been brought up with that mindset and obviously if uh, they, they had brought up thinking that camel meat was haram. They came into Islam and Islam says camel meat is halal. So that natural dislike that they had that, that, that they had in their minds, they thought it was okay that if they continued to live with, with, the, with, with those kind of effects and that kind of mindset, so they thought that they could probably mix two religions. Unfortunately, we hear such calls uh, in, in, in this day and age as well, and unfortunately some of them come, are coming from Muslims. 
So the Almighty Allah Azza wa says, fi kafa, you can't mix two religions. You can't do this, that if something is not viewed as compulsory in Islam, but, uh, but, but Judaism considers it to be compulsory, well, just even though Islam doesn't say it's compulsory, we'll still do it because that's uh, showing our con consideration to, to the Jewish faith. And something Islam considers to be compulsory, Jewish faith does not consider it to be as such, we'll, we'll, we'll take it as valid. Um, but because Judaism doesn't really uh, doesn't really forbid it, so we'll, we'll, we'll just uh, do it. So by this, they will think of mixing two religions. Allah Azza wa says that is not permissible. O oh, who you have believed, enter into peace in, into Islam kafatan completely. shaytan. Do not follow the footsteps of shaytan. What that means is whatever has been overruled by the Almighty Allah Azza wa out of all the religions, Judaism, Christianity. They were relevant until Islam came. But once the Islam came, then the relevance of those 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 uh, shariats or those uh, codes of law is no longer uh, applicable. They're no longer relevant. So following or showing regard to those religions or those shariats is equal to following the footsteps of shaitan. So what has now been overruled, what has been declared as, 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 as null and void, you, you can't show regard to such commandments or such 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 instructions. So shaitan, do not follow the footsteps of shaitan. What does it mean? I just explained. It means that showing regard to anything that Allah has overruled or the previous religions or religions other than Islam, you should show no consideration consideration to any of it and be nothing but a Muslim. mean surely shaitan is a clear enemy to you. If we pay attention to this ayah 208 and 209, maybe some of our problems as Muslims would no longer remain. And we sometimes there are things that we consider to be haram, which Allah Azza wa has not declared as such. And there are things which we consider to be compulsory, which Allah Azza wa has not declared as such. So there are hudud and there are, there are barriers or there are restrictions that Allah Azza wa has placed. And we have topped them up with other barriers which Allah Azza wa Jal did not place upon us. As a result of it, life for us has become a lot more difficult and a lot more challenging. So maybe, maybe as as, as a principle in life, we, we, we should try and, and remind ourselves that what we are Muslims and there is the halal and haram, the, the, the boundary that Allah Azza wa Jal has drawn, we'll only have regard for that and for nothing in, in no, nothing else. And that is very important. For in, in terms of halal and haram, permissible and not permissible, that that is what I'm talking about. For in I'll give you I'll give you an example. The one example uh, in the, the the ulama that I'm talking about here, Abdullah ibn Salam, the Jewish scholars that came into Islam, what was it that they had thought of? They had thought of abandoning camel meat because Judaism doesn't allow it. Allah Azza wa says, no, you cannot abandon camel meat. When Islam says it's halal, you should consume it because that is what the Sharia, that's where, the, where, where Islam has drawn the line. So you can't abandon camel meat just to, to have kind of, say, just, 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 just out of showing regard to, to, to the Jewish, your, your Jewish roots or to the other, your Jewish neighbors. The, what, some of the ulama, from the, the, some of the Mufassirs, the commentators of the Quran and Karim, they have pointed out that people um, in, under the influence of Hindu faith, for example, I'm just giving an example, you can think about Valentine's Day, you can think about so many other things. People in under Hindu, uh, the, the influence of Hindu religion, they stop eating the, the meat of cow. Uh, cow is viewed as sacred in Hindu religion. So many in India, uh, Muslims, we talk about Muslims, they, they say that Muslims should stop eating, consuming uh, the, the, the cow meat. Now, this is something which would which would contradict with Ayah 208, the one that we're looking at. It's not, you cannot abandon the, the, that meat uh, just because, just to make Hindus feel comfortable. No, you can't. If Allah Azza wa has declared something to be halal, then that is our religion, that is our deen, and that is something we should be, we should remain loyal to. But if you then sleep after that the clear signs have come to you, remember, be informed that Allah is the mighty and Allah is all wise. 
So Allah Azza wa Jal is the mighty, He can punish you for it. And Allah Azza wa Jal is Hakim. Allah Azza wa Jal is the, He knows better when whether to forgive, whether to, to, to punish. So Allah Azza wa Jal's decision will be the right one. However, you cannot escape from Allah Azza wa Jal. And if you try and make others to, to if you try and please others, Allah is controlling them too. He can turn them against you, even though you're trying to make them happy. Be afraid of none other than Allah Azza wa Jal. What is it they are waiting for after having received clear signs? Why can't people be truly loyal to Allah Azza wa Jal? They know that the, these verses are from the Almighty Allah. So why can't they be show their loyalty to Him? What are they waiting for? Are they waiting for anything other than that Allah comes to them? In shadows of clouds. والملائكة, and that the angels come to them. الأمر, and the matter is concluded. Is that what, they, what they're waiting for? الأمور, and towards Allah Azza wa Jal, all the matters are returned. And they return to Allah. The certain matters go back to Allah Azza wa Jal. So Allah Azza wa Jal demands you to be loyal and obedient. So what is holding you back? Why do you have received clear evidence? They did. The, the proof is there. Uh, so what is it that you're waiting for? Are you waiting for that moment when Allah Azza wa Jal will come on the day of judgment? Are you waiting for that moment when the Malaika will come Safa and Safa? Are you waiting for, are you waiting for that moment and that day? Now when that happens, there will nobody will have any respite given at that time, and nobody nobody's tawbah or loyalty will be accepted at that time. Ibn Kathir has mentioned that this will happen on the day of judgment. When Allah Azza wa Jal will appear, the Sayyidina Abdullah Mas'ud has reported from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that Allah Azza wa Jal will gather the awwaleen and al akhirin li miqat yawmin ma'loom for the fixed hour of the on the known day, the day of judgment, and people will all gather. Al awwaleen wal akhirin, those who came earlier and those who will come later. From the time of Sayyidina Adam alayhi salam until the last man on earth, they will be made to, they'll be gathered and they, they'll be looking, they, they'll be standing up, shakhs and amsarahum, they would be staring towards the, the heavens, ila sama, yantaziluna fasr al qada, and they'll be waiting for the matter, the matter to be, the, for the final judgment to be delivered, and that, that Almighty Allah Azza wa will appear and he'll, he'll come to them, fi dhulalim min al ghamam, in the canopies of, of, of clouds, in the shades of clouds. And then, wal malaika, and then the Prophet sallallahu alaihi said, Allah Azza will come in al arsh al kursi, from the throne to to to, to kursi, and then Allah Azza wa Jal come to come on the day on the play on the plane of judgment. Now, this is something that is mentioned in this ayah. But when you look at the meanings of it, then you you wonder what, what, what how will this happen? The Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal is not. He, you can't say he has a jism and a body. Nobody. Allah Azza wa Jal. The Quran clearly says, Laysa ka mithlihi shay. There's nothing similar to Allah Azza wa If you try and want to understand Allah Azza wa how he is, then you can't say he's a male or a female. You can't say he is, he is, um, you can't say that he has a, uh, he has a face like human beings or a body like human beings because Allah Azza wa is not like human beings and Allah Azza wa has a very different the way who, yani Allah Azza wa is different from from everyone else. Just to say that he has a body and a jism, then that would mean that would mean that he has he's like everything else. So to say that Allah has a jism or body is that's not that, that that's that's invalid statement. That's a wrong statement. That's a rejected statement. No Allah Azza wa you cannot describe anything but Allah Azza wa So what does it mean that Allah Azza wa will come on the day of judgment? The early day scholars, ulama salaf. There was, they interpreted this ayah that they would leave it as it is. They'll say, Allah Azza wa Jal will come the way his, it means the way that is, that, 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 that is befitting and that is, prop, that, that is suitable, uh, meaning to the ayah, that's how his coming will be. He will come. How will he come? We do not know. And just say, if, even if we take that, that, that phrase in our own language and we talk about it in English, that's what we, we're talking about or the, any other language that we speak. We know that we do talk about coming, but uh, our, our coming, but, but, but this coming has different uh, yani, uh, meanings. And it's used for different versions. For, for instance, you say, my, my father came from, um, from, from, from Hajj. 
Okay, that coming is clearly fine. So that does not mean that he is coming to the room. That means he's returned from Hajj. And then you say that um, the letter arrived. The, the letter came. So that is, again, a different type of coming. And then you say, a thought came to my mind. So a thought came to my mind. That is another type of coming. And then you say, the rain comes. Now, that is a different type of coming. So we know that there is something that is the, 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 arrive, the, the meaning of uh, coming face to face, uh, being in receipt of something, and, 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 and the meeting type of thing, the, the union type of thing. These are part of the concepts. But the, the true nature of coming is different in all four examples that, that, that I mentioned before you. Similarly, the Ya'tiyahumullah, the Qudum of Allah Azza wa Jal, and the Ityan and the coming of Allah Azza wa Jal will be in a manner that is suitable and befitting for Allah Azza wa Jal. Fi dhulalim min al-ghamam, in the canopies of clouds or in the shades of clouds. What does this mean? Shades of clouds. Allah, Sayyidina Musa alayhi salatu wa salam, again, I'm talking about. So, uh, as I started with, that the ulama salaf, the the mutaqaddimin, the early day scholars, they would explain these verses without going into any detail. They'll say they, they would say ya Allah or anything that is to do with Allah Azza wa Jal. They would say that this refers to the, it means whatever it means, and we have iman in it. We do not know the detail. We do not know how the coming will be, and we do not know how Allah Azza wa Jal feel uh, al ghamam how it'll be. It'll be whatever Allah Azza wa Jal means by it. That's why what we believe in it. So, so this was their, 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 their approach to such verses. The later day ulama, ulama mutaakhirin, you can say, the later, when they felt that there was weakness amongst people and they wanted to really have some idea of it, so they tried to explain by saying that these such ayat, they, they mean something that is fitting to Allah Azza wa Jal. So that is the explanation that I gave you earlier. Fi dhulalim min al So mutaakhirin tried to do to, to, to give some explanation, they, they did that wheel, something, they tried to make it easy for people to understand, but Mutaqaddimeen, their view was tafweez, they would not go into detail at all, they would just say, it means whatever Allah Azza wa means by it. Fi dhulani min al in the canopies of clouds, what does this mean? Now the second part, <clears throat> again, Mutaqaddimeen would say, it means whatever it means, Mutaqaddimeen would say, the later day scholars would say, no, it has, what it means is that, <clears throat> Something that is befitting for Allah Azza wa And they gave one, one analogy here. Allah Azza wa Jal uh, said to Sayyidina, Sayyidina Musa alayhi salatu wa salam, said to the Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal, that I want to, uh, Allah, Allah, arini, uh, arini, uh, that Allah, I want to, I want to see you. The Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal says, Lan tarani, you will not be able to see me. الجبر, but look at the peak of the, the top of the mountain. فَإِنِ اسْتَقَرَّ مَكَانَهُ فَسَوْفَ تَرَانِي if he can stay, stay, stay still, then you'd be able to, to see me. فَلَمَّا تَجَلَّى رَبُّهُ لِلْجَبَلِ جَعَلَهُ دَكَّةً وَخَرَّ مُوسَى صَعِقًا When the Almighty Allah Azza wa Jalla made that tajalli and the appearance for the Jabal, on the Jabal, it just, it, it just uh, disintegrated, it, it, the rocks, it just kind of it was crushed into, into bits and it, it couldn't survive. And Musa alayhi salatu wa fainted. So, so as the tajalli there happened on the rock to the to, to the jabal, here the tajalli, the appearance would be fi dhulalim min al-ghamam in the in, in the in the clouds that will be there, and the the, the, the tajalli will happen, the Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal, and people would be able to see it. This is the, the, the tafsir or the meaning that the later day scholars, the mutaakhir ulama, have, have have done. But in general, as students, tafweez and ta'wil are the two established views amongst uh, scholars and ulama. But anything more and beyond, where you try and give anything more, and you try and say his qudum will be like my coming or your coming, then that is something which is drifting away from the path of the of the of, of, of the mainstream ulama. Well, malaika and the malaika will appear too. Now, as I said, the Prophet sallallahu this concept of Allah azza wa revealing himself to people is mentioned in countless ahadith, and this will happen on the day of judgment. As I said, Allah ibn Kathir rahmahullah. Uh, he has stated clearly that هَلْ يَنظُرُونَ إِلَّا يَأْتِيَهُمُ اللَّهِ This phenomena will happen on the Day of Judgment. And the meaning of the ayat would be that since you have received clear verses from the Almighty Allah Azza wa you should now become obedient and loyal. What are you waiting for? Are you waiting for the Day of Judgment? So the Day of Judgment, loyalty will not be accepted. So that is the meaning of the ayah in summary. إِلَّا يَأْتِيَهُمُ اللَّهُ Or alternatively, you can also say 
Are you are people waiting for are you wait you, you do not submit? Are you waiting to, to be punished by Allah Azza wa Jal? Wal malaika tu waqudi al amr and the malaika will come on the day of judgment. Waja Rabbuka wal malaku saffa and saffa. This is discussed in uh, in Suratu 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 Naba and um, and and many other verses of the Quran Kareem where malaika people will be able to see them on the day of judgment. Uh, an angel is coming and an angel is going, and this will happen on the day of judgment in Surah Al An'am. This is also talked about that people would say they say that we want to see angels come to you with the divine revelation and the divine message. The Almighty Allah say that the response is that the demand was responded to through an ayah where Allah Ta'ala says, The day they'll see the malaika, the angels with their eyes. That will be the day when the matter will be concluded. So they will give, be, give, be given no further respite. So no, this can't happen. وَقُضِي الْأَمْرِ And the matter be concluded. Is that what you're waiting for? وَإِلَى اللَّهِ تُرْجَعُ الْأُمُورِ All the all the tasks and everything, all the affairs and the matters, they return back to they return back to Allah Azza wa Jal. سَلْ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ كَمْ آتَيْنَاهُمْ مِنْ آيَةٍ بَيِّنَةٍ Now you have been given clear signs. Remember, ask Banu Israel. How many clear signs did we give to them? So the Quran says in Surah Banu Israel that, that uh, Musa was given nine clear signs. And, and, and these signs were given to Musa which he then presented to Pharaoh and his communities. So when he presented them to Pharaoh and his communities, Banu Israel were witness to it. Those signs that were that Musa Islam was presenting to them, Banu Israel could see it. And it was they, 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 they were they were witness to it. So the Almighty Allah says, ask Banu Israel how many clear signs did we give to them? But even after having received clear signs, they many of them did not benefit. SubhanAllah, this is the Qudrat and this is the might, and this is the this is the, the ghina of Allah Azza wa Jal, where he's not dependent upon anyone. Sometimes he puts people on a hidayat and right path, even though they had nothing. There was no teacher, no kitab, nobody there, but he, the such individual becomes imam of the world. Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa himself was an ummi, yet he became Sayyid al-Rusul, the, the chief of the, the messengers, and he was Imam al-Mursaleen or uh, the, 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 the leader of the messengers. So Allah Azza wa raised him to such such level, even though no guide. No. After Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in, every, in each a, a generation, sometimes there are people who, who become pious and righteous and learned, even though if you look at their childhood and the opportunities that they had, it, they, they seem minimal. Yet they, they flourish and thrive in life because that was the taqdeer and that was the wish and that was the will of the Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal. And there are others who had the best, best upbringing. The parents were very committed and they had all the opportunities in the world, yet they show no, no, no sign of, of, of heat. Abu Lahab, his own nephew, who, 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 who must have had so much regard for him, his nephew worked tirelessly with him, but Abu Lahab showed no, he, he was not kind. So you now have clear signs that the ayat in Bayinat, which is a clear mercy of Allah Azza wa Jal, but then there were people before you who had received ayat in Bayinat. So, so whoever changes the favor of Allah upon him, after that the favor comes to him, then surely Allah is shadid al aqab of severe punishment. So just like people, Abu Lahab didn't pay attention to it, and many others like of, of his type, if you followed the path of Abu Lahab, that you had, despite having clear signs, you, 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 you showed no interest in it, and you rather opted for disbelief and kufr, then remember, in the Allah shadid al the punishment, punishment and the consequence of it is severe and major. For those who are who disbelievers, they measure success only in terms of dunya and the failure. So they notice someone who's been killed mercilessly or who ends up in a failure, loses everything. Someone is committed and principled person and he prays on time and he does all that. Then as a result, his business doesn't really survive. And I'll give you an example here, which is worthy of mention. <clears throat> I remember <clears throat> some of you, if you look around in the community, many of, many of you uh, students are migrants. Uh, you do not belong to 
to Scotland. Many of you, I know some of you are, but many of you are migrants. And I myself am a migrant. My parents came from Pakistan. Um, I belong to the migrant community. Uh, our elders, when they came to Britain, uh, some of them, they were very principled. They stayed away from haram and they, they, they lived with whatever little Allah had given to them. And others chose, others showed, showed no regard to halal and haram. So they went deeper into the dunya. They went into business and they did business whichever way that they could. And they tried to make money. And as a result of it, in this worldly terms, some became richer and others were, were poor. So I, one particular example, I know uh, one particular example in, in, in Glasgow, we had, uh, we, we had uh, or one of our uncles, Uncle Azam, uh, rahimahullah, he passed away, I think, just a just, uh, few, just, just few, few months back. May Allah grant him a high place in Jannah. And he had another companion with him, um, um, Haji Sadiq Saad, rahimahullah, they both passed away. So these were people that came, and at their time, there were others who came as well. So these individuals that I've mentioned, they were, they were committed to deen. They didn't go into haram, and they stayed committed to deen and the principles of deen. And many of them, as a result, they weren't as well off. Others who came at the same time, and they showed no regard for halal and haram, they, I know one person in Bradford, who had almost 80 properties to his name. So, and there were, there were many uh, here as well. They are very rich um, and they took, they borrowed money from banks and they, they bought properties and they, they, they showed no halal haram. They, 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 involved, they got involved heavy handedly in interest and they're still paying interest for some of the properties and they buy and sell some, some sell haram products. So if we, if you look at them, some of them uh, or in their later life, 30 years later, there was one person who, who remained strictly confined to halal and did not go into haram. So 30 years of hard work and where does he find himself? Barely owns a property. And, and he's not rich. He, he's, he's probably children, his children are probably not as rich either. But the other person who had no regard for halal and haram and he just did whatever, he, wherever he could lay his hands. So as a result of it, 30 years later, mashallah, he's, he's rolling in money. So that person who's rolling in many, when he goes to a masjid in the community, he has a standing. He has a standing. He has a following. People look at him, look up to him, and he helps here and there as well. Um, and when he goes to a masjid, everybody stands in, in a row to receive him. He goes out in the community. He's looked up to. But this person, if you look at him, in terms of halal and haram, he, he's, he's not a principled person. But from dunya, from, 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 a, from, from, in, in the, from the perspective of those who Allah Ta'ala talks about as Let's come back to Ayah 212 in order to understand what is it that we're doing. For those who disbelieved for them, worldly life is made beautiful. It has been beautified for them. So all they think of is in terms of worldly life. So the, the one who is richer in worldly life, they consider it to be successful. And those who are, who are believers, they laugh at them. So they ridicule and they laugh at those people, those who believed. So today, those two guys that came probably in the same ship 30, 40 years ago, 50 years ago, they came, they landed on one of the coastal towns and they, they engaged in the struggle of life. They came in the same ship. One was halal, strictly halal, other wasn't. And 50 years later, one is rolling in many and the other isn't. But so what if the consequences of it is that those who are rolling in many, they consider to be, mashallah, oh, it's viewed as they were the successful ones. And those who, who weren't, those who did not go to haram and didn't make, obviously, they, they weren't as, 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 uh, as successful in terms of gaining wealth, then they are laughed at. And they think that these guys are fools. Allah says, Those who are muttaqi and those who are God-fearing, they will be above them on the day of judgment. And they will be definitely be above them. They will be above them on the day of judgment. So those who are muttaqis, those who stayed away from haram, in this worldly life, probably they are not as much, they, 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 they didn't get as much dunya, but in the here, they will definitely be above them on the day of judgment. The ones who are who remain content with halal, even though they're not richer, they will be above in the eternal life. And Allah gives risks to whomever He wills in without measure. So it's not that if you resort to haram, if you resort to haram, you will become rich. No, that is not, that will not happen. There are many who resorted to haram 
and they got, they got nothing of the dunya and they ended up in failure. So there's doom and misery for there was doom and misery for them in this dunya and there's doom and misery for them in the hereafter. Um, so uh, as, as, as an imam, I see so much. I, I remember seeing an, uh, an uncle and an elderly man sitting in the masjid outside on the, on the chairs. And I'm saying this just an example for for, for, for the others. Um, and uh, he had nobody and he, 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 he was kind, kind of disabled, kind of paralyzed on the, on the left side. Um, said, said salam to him, took him to the office and he had whatever need that was, that, that, that his need was, uh, he, 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 was, he received help, whatever he wanted. And after he left, the, the brothers told me about him, that this individual had probably 14 to 15 properties to his name. But his family, nobody had any interest in him. They were, all they, 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 were, they, they cared about was the properties that he had. And as an individual, he was significantly neglected. And again, then I, then I asked about what, what, kind, what kind of person he was. He had abandoned Masajid and he had broken his tie with the Masjid and with the Masajid. And he was just busy in his shops and his business day in, day out. And I just thought about that individual that subhanAllah, even though despite having risk, there is no peace in his life and there's no respect uh, for him in the in the family. And nobody really has a, nobody really looks up to him. Some people are miserable even though they have wealth. And some people don't even get any wealth. So that is something that is not the, so that through that examples, what we learn is that abandoning halal and going into haram and 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 uh, betraying Allah Azza wa Jal is really not an option. It's not beneficial at all. Ultimately, people who betray Allah Azza wa Jal, they suffer. Even if they don't suffer in this life, they'll suffer in the hereafter. But a majority of them also suffer in this, this worldly life. May Allah Ta'ala protect us. And on the other side, people who are loyal to, 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 to their creator, they remain content within halal. They, even though they are miserable, they, they end up in misery in this life. Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam, even though he was in prison, he was happy. And so even though such people are not affluent, they are not, they not enjoy the riches of this world, but the peace and sukoon that they have in life, subhanallah, that can't be measured with anything. So before I move on, let me reiterate this because this is the essence of the teachings of the Quran. -e Do not measure the success and the failure in life through what, how much a person has managed to amass in this world. In, in, in this world, this is the standard and this is the way of kuffar. For the kuffar, his life has been made beautified. You will come across many people that are suffering because they were true to Allah Azza wa Jal. Do not laugh at them. If you laughed at them, you will be aligning yourself with the kuffar. So do not laugh at someone. There will be people who will suffer as a result of their loyalty towards deen. And you will come across such individuals in life. If you come across such an individuals, then show respect to them. They are the ones who are who have earned the, 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 the pleasure of Allah Azza wa in the hereafter. So do not show this disrespect to such individuals who are principled and who are committed to their believer. People used to be one community, a single community. So Allah Azza wa Jal fabarath Allahu Nabiyin. The Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal raised the, the messengers, Mubashirina, bearers of good news, Wamundirin and the warners. And al Kitaba Bil Haq. And the Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal revealed with them, sent down with them the kitab, the book, bilhaq, with truth. لِيَحْكُمَ بَيْنَ النَّاسِ So the book can be, or the law can be, لِيَحْكُمَ or the Nabi can be, can judge between the people, بَيْنَ النَّاسِ فِي مَخْتَلَفُوا فِي In regards to that, over which they differed or they disagreed. وَمَخْتَلَفَ فِيهِ إِلَّا الَّذِينَ أُوتُوهُ Subhanallah, surprise, surprise, they had received the kitab. Okay, let me explain this part to you and then we'll continue. People used to be one community, a single community. Sayyidina Adam alayhi salatu wasalam had his children. It is said that with the exception of Qabil, the murderer of Habil, whose story do you must have heard early sometime, some, you must have heard about his story. And in detail, his story will be discussed in Surah Al-Ma'idah. So with the exception of Qabil, and even that, he'd set an, he, Allah Azza wa had set an example through him to, for the others. They were all muwahids, believers in Allah Azza wa 
and they turned to Allah Azza wa with Tawbah and they repented to Allah Azza wa and they, they, they worshipped none but, but Allah. So that was the culture and that was the, the path and that was the tradition that all people, they were all Ummatan Wahidatan, they were just one community. So they were one community, but then they began to drift away and then they started to, to disagree over things. So Allah Azza wa raised, فَبَعَثَ اللَّهُ النَّبِيِّينَ So Allah Azza wa sent the, the prophets, مُبَشِّرِينَ وَمُنْذِرِينَ It is said that the first Nabi that came after Sayyidina Adam alayhi salatu was Sayyidina Idris alayhi salatu was salam. Or no, or before Sayyidina Idris, Sayyidina Sheith alayhi salam. And between their time is, is said about, some, some of the who said, and again, these, this is just, uh, it is difficult to say, that this is this, this not mentioned in the hadith. As to, I, I, at least I did not find such such a hadith which which would which I'd say that it was truly authentic. But some ulama have, have said this, and sometimes uh, the elders say that such interpretations, such views, they, their roots lie in biblical literature, and biblical literature is not a true source. Uh, when 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 okay, another principle here is that when you get a view. Uh, an interpreter in a view in regards to a Quranic verse, the origin of which lies uh, in, in a scholar who was previously either a Yahudi, a Jewish, or a, or, or, or a Nasrani or a Christian. So such views are always taken with a pinch of salt. What he means is that you you exercise caution. Sometimes such ulama who had roots in Christianity or Judaism then came to Islam, they they, they sometimes we hear that say like Kaab Ahbar radiallahu anhu. Kaab Ahbar is a prominent scholar who came into Islam from Jewish faith at the time during the time of Sayyidina uh, Sayyidina Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu. And Sayyidina Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu, he, he gave him prominence because he was indeed a learned scholar. Um, and Kaab Ahbar radiallahu anhu had his own, mashallah, he was a committed, committed uh, tabi'i, we would say. So Kaab Ahbar sometimes his views are mentioned. I think I've, I talked about Kaab Ahbar in the ayah um, where I had mentioned that Kaab Ahbar used to say that I have such uh, uh, my Jewish companions, they hate me to such such an extreme that if they could get away with it, if, if, if it wasn't to, to a few words that I recite every day, they would turn me into, into a donkey. So it's just I'm, I'm saved from their, their evil spell purely because there are certain words that I recite every morning and every evening. Um, and I had and I had mentioned some of those those words and I, had, I think I'd shared a screen here as well on that day. So that Kaab Ahbar whose who's, who's source, whose who's origin lies in, in, in Judaism, he, became into, he came into Islam. And sometimes we, we hear that Kaab Ahbar explained an ayah and this is an explanation that, that he offered. The other ulama, they take his views with, with, with a bit of caution because he had learned the biblical literature in detail. So he was an expert and he had read so much in biblical literature that sometimes he explains an ayah or he gives he gives a limit to, to something. So, and it is feared that that may have been, he, he that, that, that was his view, but maybe that information he picked up from the biblical literature. So for the mainstream Muslims, he's, he, might, he might have given to his, to his, call, to his students, uh, he might have given the reference to the students as well, but later that reference was lost in the, in the transmission. Um, so a, such, such a view is taken with, with, with a bit of caution. So here, uh, the, the, the time between Sayyidina Adam salam and up to Sayyidina Shis salam, some have said that this was about 10 qarns, the 10 generations. If each generation was 100 years, so they say that's about 1,000 years. But then I would be a people like a student like myself, and I'm sure uh, you would probably share my 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 uh, feelings here. We know that Sayyidina Adam al Islam lived for 940 years, and we know that Sayyidina Nuh al Islam lived for 950 years minimum. Um, if this is the case, if this was the average age at the time, a thousand years, then ten qarns, ten generations, probably mean that, that probably means ten thousand years. So that is the time when people used to be ummatan wahidatan, one community. But obviously, 10,000 years or 1,000 years is a lot of time. And over that period of time, people began to differ and disagree over matters. One would consider a thing to be halal and the other would say it's haram. One would say, and, and the opposite. 
So the Almighty Allah Azza wa raised the Nabis, the, the, the Prophets, Mubashireen, in order to give a glad tiding to those who were on the right path, Wamundirin, and to warn those who were on the wrong path. So this is what the Prophets did. They kind of they established the, the true path. And Allah Azza wa also gave to them Al Kitab, Bil Haq. Um, Allah Azza wa gave them the Kitab. Uh, and now these were these were scrolls that were given to them. Sayyidina uh, Adam alayhi salat was salam and later prophets, they had divine instructions which are not preserved. The only ones that we have preserved are from the from, from Ibrahimic faiths, from the uh, from the progeny of Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salat was salam, all that was given, even what was given to Suhuf Ibrahim or Musa, Allah Ta'ala says Ibrahim alayhi salat was salam was given some scrolls. We do not have that preserved, we do not know what, what, what is said. So the kitabs that were given to Sayyidina Idris alayhi salam or to Sayyidina Shis alayhi salam or to Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam or the other prophets, we have no traces of it left. But we know that there were kitabs given to, to them. It was revealed with the truth. And, and the purpose of the, the revelation was nas. So the, the kitab may judge between people or the Nabi may judge between people in regards to that over which they disagreed. fi over which they disagreed. Now, they had a kitab now to help them identify the truth. But then the Almighty Allah Azza wa mentions here the response of the human being, the, the, the response of the human beings, how they responded to it. But no one disagreed in it except the very people who were given this kitab. After that, the clear signs had come to them. And they did so. Why? out of jealousy between them, out of their animosity. Baghi is here, it has been translated as jealousy, but the, the true meaning is animosity. That was the one, they, they couldn't get on with the other. So this hatred, this dislike for one another, and this uh, this envious sentiments, and this sentiments of animosity and hatred and dislike, this was the cause of the disagreement. So the disagreement wasn't that the signs weren't clear. The disagreement wasn't that the instructions were not clear. The cause of the disagreement was because they couldn't get on with one another. And in order to, to, to establish their separate identity, they had to differ and they had to disagree. Even though they had received the clear signs. So then Allah guided those who were believers. He guided them to that in which they had disagreed, they had deferred, uh, the, that al-haq over in, in, in which they had disagreed. And Allah guides whom he wills to the right path, ila salatim mustaqim, to the right path. So this was the, this is the word baghiyam baynahum here, comes out to be the probably the strongest word for us believers. Why do people defer? Why is the why, why is it that they have ikhtilaf? One major cause of ikhtilaf is even though there are other causes as well, but this is Bari and Bainahum, this was the cause of ikhtilaf between them, this hatred and dislike and jealousy. So as a result of this, they couldn't agree over it and they they they, they drifted away from the truth. So let's go back to what we are talking about. We are talking about Allah Ta'ala says. فَإِنْ زَلَلْتُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا جَاءَتْكُمُ الْبَيِّنَاتِ اُدْخُلُوا فِي السِّلْمِ كَافَ Enter into Islam completely. And Allah Azza wa has revealed clear signs to you, so remain obedient to Him. And if you having received, after having received clear signs, if you then slept and if you drifted away, then Allah Azza wa is in full control, He'll punish you. So that clear signs came to them, they didn't benefit. So make sure that since you have received clear signs, you benefit from it. And baghiyam baynahum is a cause of slip. It causes people to slip and it causes people to drift away, uh, stay away from it. Do not have such hatred or dislike for, for one another, which then pushes you away from the right path. <clears throat> so bi'iznihi, the word bi'iznihi here tells us the protection, how to save yourself through dua and through humility before Allah. And through through constantly turning to Him and 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 and, and showing uh, to humbleness before to, to Allah Azza wa Jal and His fear and khashiyat, that is something which will protect you from slipping. So it's not only information. In addition to having information, you need tawfiq, 
and that tawfiq and strength and support comes from Allah for which you need to turn to him because Allah has the capacity to guide whomever he wills to the right path. Here, there's probably a relevant discussion here would be about what causes ikhtilaf. There are two types of ikhtilaf. There's one type of ikhtilaf, which is the cause of which is baghyam baydahum. And the other, kinds of, other, other uh, cause of ikhtilaf is where people disagree. People disagree because they, 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 try, they try to understand but because the mental capacity for everybody is not the same, people struggle to, to understand the truth. If the, if the intention is to obey, if the intention is to, to, to dhatar, obedience, then if you, if you make a mistake, that kind of ikhtilaf is not forbidden. At the time, during the time of the Prophet ﷺ, Sahaba sometimes would disagree. But the Prophet ﷺ would ignore that. Because that's, that, that's, that's human nature that Allah Azza wa didn't create everybody to be the same. So that kind of ikhtilaf where the niyat, the intention was to, to obey uh, and, to, uh, and, and, to, and to carry out the true will of the, of, of, the, of the authority, that kind of ikhtilaf is not forbidden. The ikhtilaf that is forbidden is the one which is which the root of which lies in rebellion and the root of which is lies in hatred and dislike. We see ikhtilaf at the time of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. One immediate example that springs to mind is the ikhtilaf that Sahaba had when the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, at the end of the Battle of Trenches, instructed the Sahaba to march towards Banu Qurayza, and he said, "La yusalliyan ahadukum illa fi Bani Qurayza. None of you should pray asr salah except except at, at Banu Qurayza's doorsteps, except in the after having arrived at at at, at where." The, the, the tribe Banu Quraiza resides. So Sahaba immediately, this was after Zuhr Salah. <clears throat> so they went to homes and they quickly got there ready, whatever they needed, and they marched towards Banu Quraiza, which went very, very far away, but it was still a few miles. <clears throat> Some of them were able to leave instantly. Others obviously couldn't, and it, they, they were held on the way. And so those who were held, and those who couldn't get there before the Asr Salah time, and they were on the way to Banu Qurayza, they, 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 there were two approaches amongst them. One approach was that they delayed their Asr Salah. Some even had their Asr Salah missed, uh, and they, they, they did Qaza of Asr with Maghrib at Banu Qurayza. Because they said, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to us that, that you are not allowed to pray Asr Salah except at Banu Qurayza. Others rushed, but, but since they were delayed, they, they prayed their Asr wherever the time was, and they they did not delay their, 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 their journey or their effort, so, but they prayed Asr wherever they, they, they had to. Uh, the time uh, got them, and then they continued and they arrived at Munu Qurayza as soon as they were able to, but they did not qaza their Asr Salah. They both mentioned to the Prophet ﷺ what they had done. The Prophet ﷺ did not say anything. He did not criticize those who had missed their Asr Salah or, or those, to, those who had delayed their Asr Salah to very close time to Maghrib, or to, to those who had uh, prayed on the way, that even though he had said that don't pray Asr except at Banu Qurayza, since he knew that the intention of both were pure. So that kind of ikhtilaf, where the, uh, the idea, where the desire is to fulfill the will of the authority, but detail is where the disagreement, or, or which the, the disagreement or difference of, of opinion arises, that kind of ikhtilaf is not forbidden, that's not condemned, that's in fact the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has praised that kind of ikhtilaf elsewhere. That this is a rahmah, and he had even say, "Fattakullah uh, mustatatum," and when he said that, uh, "Fear Allah as much as you're capable of," and then he also said that if I command you to do something, then do as much as you can, and do not ask me for details, and then, and do not be do not ask too many questions, like Banu Israel where they were commanded to slaughter a cow, they should have slaughtered a cow, whichever they were capable of. But when they started asking, asking for specific details, it was made stricter. So he would discourage them from asking too many questions. He would say, do whatever you're capable of and do as much as you can manage. Similar. So as a result, that kind of ikhtilaf, that is not forbidden, that's not frowned upon. But the ikhtilaf, which, the cause of which is baghi, the cause of which is hatred or dislike, that is which is which is condemned here, and may Allah Azza wa protect us all from 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 that ailment and that that illness. I know I've been speaking for more than an hour, 
uh, I think I deserve a break as well for, for, for a few minutes, um, and you too, uh, inshallah. So we'll take about five minutes break, and we'll resume in a few minutes' time, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Nahmaduhu wa nusalli wa nusalli wa ala rasulihi al-kareem. Amma ba'd. Am hasibitum an tadukhul jannata wa lamma ya'tikum mathalu al-ladhina khalaw min qablikum. Do you think, am hasibitum, did you think that you will enter jannah? Whereas, lamma ya'tikum, it hasn't come to you so far. Mathalu al-ladhina khalaw min qablikum, like of that which came to those that passed away before you. Do you think that you will enter Jannah even though Lamma Ya'tikum what means and the state that or even though at a time Lamma Ya'ti it hasn't come to you so far Lamma until now hasn't come to you the like of that which came to those that have passed away that have passed away before you. Masatum al Ba'sa Adversity. We talked about al-ba'sa in ayatul bir. Leis al-bir an tuallu wujuhakum. Masat hun ba'sa. Adversity and hardship came to them. Wadzara and the pain and trouble. Wazul zidu and they were shaken. Hatta yaqul al-rasul. So so such 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 a test and so much pain and so much ba'sa, so much hardship, so much pain and so they were shaken uh, such to such an extent that hatta yaqul al-rasul until even the messenger said. And those who had believed with him, they said, Mata Nasrullah, when will come the, the help of Allah? Lo and behold, Allah, inna Nasrullah qareeb, surely the Nasr of Allah and the help of Allah is nearby. Sadaqallah al Azim. Now, this is, hal, hmm, we read about Sayyidina Suhaib Rumi radiallahu anhu. Wa min al nasi man yashri nafsahu ibtigha amardatillah. He was put through a test and he just gave away everything to save himself. And Allah says, Do not compromise in terms of your loyalty and obedience. Be loyal and obedient only to Allah and do not share loyalty with anyone other than him. And this is this has been said to you, explained to you in clearly and clear signs have come to you. But you did this and you you are, you became a target of um, ridicule at the hands of alladina kafaru and yet because they yaskharuna they they, they 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 ridicule and laugh at the believers so you have and then you have you are put to test by your own folk bariyam bainahum who who challenge you and who oppose you because of their hatred and dislike for you so you have to to work through all these hurdles and you have to to remain loyal to allah Inevitably, you, one wonders, and this happened. It, this did. The, and this. The, the, it, it's not only you that that have been that, that have to go through such a test. You know, the first generation that is that is finding the path so difficult. This is the tradition of. This is the sunnah of Allah Azza wa Jal. People who want to to tread on the path of piety and virtue, this path is difficult. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Hujibat al jannatu that the, the, the paradise is covered with uh, the sorry the hellfire is covered with shahwat all you have to do is follow your lust and desires and you'll end up in jahannam and jannat is covered with al makari things that you do not like they are hard difficult path so this is the sunnah of allah azza wa jal. if you want to be loyal to allah then at every stage in life there's a test waiting for you and this test is you're not the first generation who's been put through this those that passed away before you they went through the same and the, and the, the test was such that they almost thought they almost thought that the promise that was that had been made to them that allah says i will definitely help those who help in the and who helped me and man Allah qadhan hasana and clear signs with clear verses where Allah Ta'ala uh, where Allah Ta'ala has promised protection we read up there wallahu raufun bil ibad Allah is compassionate he has compassion for the for the servants up there in ayah 207 so they said 
that why are we being put through such a test? Where is the Nasrullah? When will come the Nusrat of Allah Azza wa In fact, at the end of Surah Yusuf, uh, the Almighty Allah says, uh, <clears throat> that which, the, which is a difficult ayah to explain, where it, is, where it says that Rasul's thought that they are they were they uh, they were to, they were told a lie, so that that ayah is difficult to explain. That did did a messenger ever thought that Allah Azza wa Jal had told a lie to him? So obviously that's not the meaning of the ayah. So ayah requires a detail, uh, some 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 explanation. But that is the level. Hatta yaqul al Rasul wal ladin amanu ma'hu matan Rasulullah that were, that they were put through such difficult tests. And this, the test prolonged, just like the Ummah of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam at this day and age. We, we started having difficulties and hardships from the end of 18th century and the 19th century and the 20th century and now it's the 21st century. The journey of decline doesn't seem to end. And one after the other, we, we hear difficult, uh, we hear news and we hear Diff, you know, difficult things that are difficult and that's that's going this is despite that there's not a single moment passes by when the sound of Allah takbir doesn't echo somewhere on the planet so adans are happening almost 24 hours 7 and there are people going to massage it and countless people are truly loyal to Allah Azza wa Jal. I just gave you a few examples up there there are many people in Edinburgh, there are many people in, in, in Glasgow, there are many people elsewhere in Scotland and in England who are truly loyal to Allah Azza wa Jal. Yet, the, this journey of decline doesn't seem to end. So, people have started saying, Mata Nasrullah, where is the, when will come the help of Allah? <clears throat> and others have begin to, beginning to laugh at and ridicule and make mockery, uh, make fun of the, of, of the true believers. Um, you must have heard things, what happened, uh, the kind of things that were talked about uh, at the start of the lockdown, during the lockdown, at the end of the lockdown. These are people who are saying, Mata Nasrullah, when will come the help of Allah Azza wa Jal? amanu up there. They're making fun of those and they, 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 they laugh at those who want to remain loyal to Allah Azza wa Jal. So this happened and this, this will happen to you. Allah says, Ala inna Nasrullah qareeb. Surely the Nasr of Allah and the help of Allah is nearby, it's not far. This will come and this will rescue you. But this happens when, when you have no hope in any worldly dunya, in, in, in worldly terms, there's no hope left. The scholars here, are they, 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 they raise a question. Why does Allah Azza wa Jal think that even the Rasul begins to, to wonder that Why doesn't the sign of the help of Allah come? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on the night of Badr, if you <clears throat> look at the dua that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was making, and one of the one of the duas was, and it, it, it makes you shake, <clears throat> it really, it's a dua. <clears throat> SubhanAllah, it's even difficult to, to, to utter that dua. The the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was 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 weeping and he's crying and say that and he was so so deep in dua. That his the, the clock that, that that he had on it fell off his shoulders and he was saying Allahumma in tuhlak hadhi al-asaba falam tu'bad abada. Oh Allah, if this handful of people, if these people are killed tomorrow, if these are destroyed tomorrow, then you will never be you will never be worshipped. Falam tu'bad abada. Now, how would a Rasul say this? Allahumma in tuhlak. Allahumma. In tuhlak hadin al saba, falan tuhla, falan tuaba da abadan. That if this the handful of these people are killed tomorrow, then until the day of judgment, you'll not you'll not be worshipped. He knew Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam that he was the khatam al nabiyin. He was the last of the prophets, <coughs> and he had made so much effort, fifteen years of patiently working in Makkah Mukarramah, and then fleeing from Makkah Mukarramah. So <coughs> this was hatta ayqur Rasul, and then we all know what happened on, on, in the battle of Badr. So this was this 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 happened in the past, and the, as, as I was mentioning earlier, why did Allah Azza wa do it this way? The scholars say because Allah Taala wants people to realize that it is He who rescues them; it's not the other way around. So it's not what you have, your weapons that that help you, or it's not that your number that helps you. It is the Nusrat of Allah Azza wa that rescues you. This is why there were three hundred and thirteen and defeated a thousand in Badr. But there were 12,000 at Hunayn 
and they could not overpower the Thaqif. So Hatta Yaqul al-Rasul, I've just mentioned a couple of things from Sirah. Those of you who are not sure, you can remind me and I'll, I'll elaborate on this. But Muslims, they were in greater in number and they were defeated and they were less in number and Allah Azza wa granted them victory. In Vienna, you were less in many in number, but you were defeated. The Battle of Vienna, if you remember, and but you were less in number <coughs> in other wars and Allah Azza wa supported you and he helped you. <coughs> so <coughs> Allah Azza wa wants to establish that it is his help that rescues the believers and people loyal to him and it's not the other way around. Mata Nasrullah, when will come the help of Allah? Allah So hardship and difficulty for believers, you're not the first community that is the, the, to, to experience it. This is the sunnah of Allah Azza wa Jal. Yes, Aluna Kamada Yunfiqun. Now returns to the Yes Alunaka theme. You remember that Yes Alunaka theme was being followed earlier. Yes Alunaka Anil Ahilla. They ask you about the new moons. And yes, uh Sa'alaka Ibadi. So they ask you, I did mention that there are about eight yes alunaka is in, in, in Surah Al seven, 7 or 8 in Surah Al Baqarah. So I think there are eight, there are eight what, seven is yes alunaka and one is wa iza sa'alak. So these yes alunaka theme again comes back to the details of Ahkam. In between here, there was uh, after Hajj, there was some mention of Iman and, and the aspects of Iman, but now it again returns to the practical things. The amal. Yes, They ask you what should they spend in the path of Allah. Azza will say whatever you spend out of khair, out of good, then it is for it should be spent for the parents, for the relatives, for the orphans, masakin, and for the needy, wabn sabil, and the wayfarers, wayfare, the, the travelers. And whatever khair, good thing, good amal you do, surely Allah is aware of it. <clears throat> so the question is about spending. Spending in the path of Allah is a carries a great carries great virtue. And Amal al Bir, this is the only thing that a passing person would would would, would wish, uh, as mentioned in Surah Munafiqun, uh, that when the when when the mouth comes that he wants more time, a bit more time, so he can spend more in the path of Allah Azza wa So in Faq fi Sabilillah is recommended but not not only at the time of death during the life as well so they say <clears throat> how much what, what should they spend so the question is about the amount but the answer is not about the amount the answer is where should they spend the question is how much they spend or what they spend and the answer is who should they spend upon why isn't the the, the question directly answered the scholars again have said that the for here the the yani the the the, the the point here is that how much you spend, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not want a specific amount. That's not what Allah Azza wa wants from you. That you spend a certain pro proportion of your wealth, certain amount of your wealth, that's not what Allah Azza wa wants. What he wants is that you spend in a manner which pleases him. And you spend upon those, <coughs> the, their parents and the relatives and Yatama Masakin ibn Sabeel. So Allah Ta'ala wants you to spend in the right manner, in the, in the right causes. In terms of the amount, that is not a specific requirement. Wherever the need is, according to the need, spend. And according to how much, whatever you can afford. If you look at the, the ayah, then the ayah talks about parents as well. So this, this indicates that this ayah is not about compulsory spending. This is not about sadaqat wajiba. So this is not about zakah. Because we know elsewhere, Allah Ta'ala... It's been mentioned that zakah cannot be given to the parents. <clears throat> so a, a, a child can't give his zakah, a son can't give zakah to his father or to his mother, and a father can't give zakah to his son or a daughter. So zakah, or over here, zakah is not being mentioned, it's sadaqat and nafilah are mentioned. So nafilah charity should be given to, to all these people. Parents, obviously, that's where, where, the, where, where the virtue starts from. After that is aqrabin. Spending on the poor uh, relatives carries double the ajr. When the ayah Lan tanal birra hatta ma was revealed, that you would never be able to get complete virtue until you spend out of that which you love most, Sayyidina Talha anhu, he went to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and he said, Ya Rasulullah, the out of my wealth, the most precious thing that I have is Bayruha. And this is this was an orchard that was at the doorstep of Masjid al-Nabawi. 
And the Prophet وسلم, himself would go to this orchard sometime and there was a well in there and there were, mashallah, fresh uh, dates that he would get from there. He would receive and uh, I think some grapes as well. And the Prophet وسلم, would go there to rest. So what can be more precious than that, that orchard where even the Prophet وسلم, would go and rest? So people, others looked at it with, 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 with envy that Talha is the owner where the Prophet وسلم, regularly visits. Everybody wanted to have that. And Talha loved that piece of wealth as well. He comes to Rasulullah and he says, Ya Rasulullah, the best and the most beloved thing to me that I have is this, this orchard. And to please Allah Azza wa Jal, I now give it to the path of Allah, that's the sadaqah. Because Allah wants us to spend out of that which, we, which is dear to us. The Prophet wasallam accept, he said, your sadaqah is accepted, but I would recommend that rather than giving it to, to, to sadaqah, to, to others, give it to your relatives. So there is there the Prophet ﷺ recommended that sadaqah rather than giving it to the outsiders, if they're needy in their amongst the relatives, you have a sister who's needy, you have a brother who's a needy, you have a child who's a needy, you have a granddaughter or nephew or a niece who's needy, reach out to them, reach out to them and try and help them. <clears throat> Unfortunately, because of the kind of tension within families and sometimes because of the competition within the families between siblings. Sometimes we find it difficult to reach out to our nephews and nieces. And sometimes you have to be careful because even the brothers and sisters, uh, that, that uh, and the nephew and nieces, their parents, sometimes they get upset. But it, in, in a manner which is appropriate, try and reach out to all the needy within your family, uncles and aunts, because this gets you double the reward. One reward is for, the, for helping the poor, and the other reward is reaching out to, to, to the relatives and keeping that, that family links. Uh, to, to, strength, to, to strengthen them, there's an extra virtue and extra reward for that. Waliyatama and the orphans and masakin of Nasabil, Wama Tafalu bin Khairin, Fa'in Allah Habihi Adin, Kutiba Alaikum al Qital, Waho Kurhun Lekum. This is another aspect of, as it was said earlier, Kutiba Alaikum al Siyam, Kama Kutiba Al Ladin al Kablikum, fasting has been prescribed for you over here, Al Qital is mentioned. Dunmat Allah Azza wa Jal says, Al Qital, fighting in the path of Allah Azza wa Jal has been prescribed for you, this has been made compulsory upon you, even though lakum, that is hateful to you. Who likes, who, yani, this is not something that people find comforting. Allah Ta'ala says, not for the sake of dunya, not to establish your own kingdom, but merely to please Allah Azza wa Jal, you have to fight in the path of Allah Azza wa Jal. So what happens tend to, yani, even if you establish, say, uh, you, you fight, and you make sacrifices and you establish your authority, your authority comes to the terms of Allah Azza wa Jal. Every penny that comes into to your account, that will you'll have to spend it in a responsible manner. Even though that is hateful to you. So, so it is difficult, but Allah says, I demand from you to do that for me. It is hateful to you. And it is perhaps likely possible that you hate something even though that is better for you. And perhaps there's something that you love most and you love and that is bad for you. Allah knows and you do not know. If only we could have our faith in this ayah. Half of our doubts and half of our, our problems would go away. That sometimes you are not able to judge what is right and what is wrong. Your judgment is governed by and it's in the shadow of your own desires. Um, well, that's again, that would do a couple that comes to mind. I don't know what, what mood am I in today. Um, <laughs> or and the other one is so this yani our our lust. It, it seems to, to, to overpower our, our decision making. And the Almighty Allah Azza wa says, do not be tempted by your lust. In terms of when you're thinking about what is right and what is wrong, sometimes there might be things that you do not like, but they're beneficial for you. And things that you like may be harmful to you. So let Allah Azza wa decide for you what you should do. And Allah Azza wa has decided that qital is compulsory for you. You must fight in the path of Allah Azza wa for the sake of Allah Azza wa Yes, Aluna Kani Shahri Al Haram. Inshallah, we'll continue from this verse next week. Just before we conclude, I want you to talk about one or two other things.
um, particularly, I know the time's up, um, particularly I wanted to remind you that the month of Zul Hijjah starts in three, four days. Um, I think 22nd of July, that will be, that is likely to be, most likely to be the first of Zul Hijjah. It may even be the 21st. So keep an eye out there. Uh, Eid al Adha is likely to be on the 31st of July. So the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah is very important time of the year. Uh, according to some ulama, this is probably the most precious time of the year. So if you get uh, a chance, try to do as much ibadat as you can, sadaqat, salm. If you can fast, then by all means you should try and consider fasting. There's no tanawi, but it, there's no formal i'tikaf here because this is the time when people will be doing hajj. However, Spending time in ibadat, in tilawat, in sadaqah, in, in, um, and other forms of takbir and tahleel, this is extreme, this is recommended and is highly stressed upon. Secondly, udhiyah and qurbani is also essential. If you, some, I know many people, unfortunately, many people don't uh, take this aspect seriously. Um, qurbani is, according to almost all four schools, um, it is very important. According to Ahnaf, it is wajib. Uh, Hanafi school, but others call it Sunnah, but very stressed upon Sunnah, and to intentionally miss Qurbani, even though one can afford to do, or one has the means to, or one is required to, because he or she owns Nisab, uh, that would be that would amount that that would amount to a sin, and there's no qada of it either. So the only qada of it is that you give the equivalent of Qurbani uh, in Sadaqah. So try and th think about this if you can, inshallah. Um, so that is point one. Point two is class today started at half one. Next week again, it's likely to start around about the same time. Um, in fact, next week, inshallah, we hope to have from two o'clock until four o'clock. So if you have to make other arrangements for class, um, so think about it. I think you'll formally be notified through WhatsApp, um, but most likely, inshallah, next week class will be from two till four, but this is subject to confirmation later on. Any questions here before we conclude? Oh, no, totally forgot, sister. Um, the Masad had opened this week, so I was just running about between there and there. I'll do this straight away. If I get a chance, inshallah, try and put this on WhatsApp if you're there. Um, if not, then definitely, inshallah, try, try and have it for you. It's making a note of it. Inshallah. So I'll do it on WhatsApp. That's fine. Okay. Jazakallah <clears throat> khairan. Um, so just uh, during the, the 10 days of the Hijjah, a uh, request that remember me and, and the team here in your du'as. May Allah Azza wa Jal grant us all, give us all the tawfiq and make it easy for us all. Wa sallallahu sallam wa rahman ala habibihi sayyidna wa rabina wa ulana Muhammad. وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته